This is Ritesh Srinivasan and welcome to my channel. In this video, let's look at the applications of artificial intelligence in the field of gastroenterology and hepatology. Okay. So this is about the applications of artificial intelligence in the field of healthcare. So in this video, let's look at the basics first. Like what is gastroenterology? What is hepatology? Then we'll look at what are the procedures in these fields. Then we'll look at the AI applications in this field. I'll be using this particular paper as reference over here and I'll be referring to this paper and I'll be explaining from this paper. Okay. In the end, I'll also talk about some data sets if you are interested in working in this domain. So what is gastroenterology? Gastroenterology is the branch of medicine focused on the digestive system and its disorders. Okay, so diseases affecting the entire gastrointestinal tract starting from the organs from the mouth all the way to the anus including the alimentary canal which is our uh, intestines, right? So the physicians practicing in this field are called gastroenterologists. Okay, so what are the procedures which have uh, useful diagnostic procedures over here. So one is something called as an esophago gastro duo endoscopy or endoscopy. So in endoscopy what happens is that this is a procedure whereby a tube will be passed from the mouth into your stomach. It will have a camera by which and it will have lenses by which a physician would visualize the insides of your intestines right interesting basically uh, you know the insights up to uh, basically the esophagus and the stomach and up to the duodenum right where uh, the small intestine starts from the stomach okay up to that point is endoscopy then you have colonoscopy which is another procedure whereby what they do is that uh, you know this is for the endoscopy examination of the large bowel and the distal part of the small bowel with the ccd camera or a fiber optic camera right on a flexible tube pass it through the anus so basically via the anus a flexible tube is passed and it is used to visualize up to your small intestine right over here up to this point right so this is uh, your uh, colonoscopy so this is another procedure okay so an endoscopy uh, is a procedure whereby your uh, upper abdomen uh, digestive system is visualized Colonoscopy is the lower digestive system and then nowadays you have something called as wireless capsule pill which I will be talking about when I go to this uh, paper. Okay. Then you have hepatology. All right. Hepatology is what? It is the study of uh, liver, pancreas, biliary tree. Uh, so basically it is a study of all these organs. Okay. So now let's go to the paper, right? And how artificial intelligence applications um, can be useful in this particular field. Okay. So the first one, as I said, is the procedure called endoscopy, right? So in endoscopy, you have certain conditions which can be identified, like Barrett's esophagus, esophageal cancer. Then in the stomach, certain H. pylori infection or gastric cancer. Okay. So each of these conditions can be identified. Currently, this is being identified by the clinician who performs the procedure, who visually examines when the tube is passed through the mouth. Similarly, for colonoscopy, you can identify certain things like colorectal cancer, right? Or there are certain conditions like ulcerative colitis, right? And then you have this capsule endoscopy, which is a wireless capsule fitted with a camera, which a person ingests and then it kind of images the entire uh, digestive system before passing out in the stools. Okay. So it kind of wirelessly transmits the entire set of images. So even in that, you can identify certain diseases, bleeding, uh, what do you call certain conditions. Okay. Now, how is this detection done? So let's go to that. Okay. So Barrett's uh, esophagus is a condition which is a primary risk factor for the development of a certain type of esophageal cancer okay so what they are saying over here is that uh, they have uh, different authors okay have developed say an algorithm which combines multiple ml models 
to develop uh, which have been developed to detect this cancerous condition from laser volumetric laser intro microscopy images okay then there is also over here where they have actually developed cnn network which has been trained on these endoscopic images and they claim it to have a very high specificity and uh, you know sensitivity and specificity okay basically they have also deployed a real time application of deep learning model to identify this so basically on real time endoscopy when the procedure is performed this cnn has been able uh, this convolution neural network has been able to identify accurately say with an accuracy of 90% similar to that of expert endoscopists okay the other one is your cancer detection right so what they are saying over here for the cancer detection uh, a model was created basically again convolution neural network model was created based on um, this narrow band uh, your endoscopic images and they have very high sensitivity and specificity what they are saying is that these studies have demonstrated the feasibility of deploying ml model during live endoscopy to assist with the diagnosis of this cancer okay that is what is said over here so here we have seen two examples where they are talking about live deployment of a convolution neural network when the endoscopy is happening to detect these conditions similarly they talk about uh, gastric cancer uh, again a convolution neural network was trained which had such high sensitivity okay over uh, 24000 images for uh, detection of your uh, gastric cancer okay so this is with respect to the endoscopy uh, they also looked at whether uh, you can look at endoscopic images and identify a certain infection so this h pylori infection can cause ulcers in the stomach so how do you actually uh, determine that okay so that is what is discussed over here so most of the models which have been used the machine learning models over here are your convolution neural networks on endoscopic images okay similarly in the colonoscopy space they have actually deployed or um, you know a polyp detection model to assist with live endoscopy okay patients were randomized and uh, they were um, you know in the cnn based polyp detection system would alert the endoscopists uh, when a polyp was detected uh, polyps are certain conditions which um, you know may be cancerous or may point to cancer or may not be cancerous they can be benign polyps also okay in your large intestine so which are detected via the colonoscopy okay so what uh, they did over here was uh, what they say is that this cnn based polyp detection resulted in a 9% increase in cancer detection rate okay or and a greater number of adenomas were detected per patient okay so they also said there is another cnn model which was trained uh, to distinguish this is another condition called ulcerative colitis uh, uh, so how do you actually uh, detect the remission based on endoscopic images so whether it is present not present currently has it gone into remission what is the grade okay so you can actually detect that using again convolution neural network okay so here is a summary of uh, what kind of computer vision applications can be used in endoscopy uh, and for what uh, clinical conditions okay and what are the machine learning solutions so you can actually if you are interested you can read this paper to further understand about these uh, computer vision solutions for endoscopy uh, right so this is about your uh, endoscopy right now let's look at wireless capsule endoscopy as i said before it's a pill with a camera which is being swallowed by the patient okay and during this single procedure an average of 12000 images are generated it takes at least 30 minutes on average for an experienced gastroenterologist to read and interpret so here uh, you know these images are continuously coming and then uh, there is a significant amount of time and effort required to look at these images right so what if you can have machine learning models which can look at this and automatically pull important things like you know uh, bleeding in the stomach uh, small bowel tumors or inflammatory bowel disease these kind of conditions right so here an svm model was developed in 2014 it had certain sensitivity and specificity uh recently cnn based models have been developed over here to identify uh, these conditions okay so majority of our applications over here use convolution neural network 
and what they say is that uh, this can be also used convolutional neural networks can also be used to identify uh, these inflammatory bowel conditions and kind of differentiate them uh, from the images which are obtained by this wireless uh, capsule endoscopy okay so that is the thing over here the application of again convolution neural network and this can actually speed up this process and also help the clinicians right so you can think of these problems like uh, you have a continuous stream of video which you get when a capsule a wireless capsule is being swallowed and in this stream of video you have to identify certain conditions basically these frames these images okay that's the same with endoscopy also you have a continuous stream of uh, images coming up and on that images you need to identify same with the colonoscopy okay so for all these uh, things mostly convolutional neural networks have shown very good results okay so this was about the endoscopy procedures right now if you go to hepatology uh, there you have ultrasound which is being used and there you need to identify things like uh, you know liver disease uh, the liver fibrosis stage right identify liver lesions uh, differentiate benign versus malignant lesions in the liver right to identify liver cancer kind of conditions similarly with pancreas okay so there you have models which have been developed on ultrasound um, basically deep learning model has been developed previously svm models were developed to detect and characterize these lesions okay so these are the applications and you also have ct and mri on which the same kind of uh, networks have been used to identify these lesions so that is about uh, you know the applications of ai over here in hepatology and pancreatology again it's about using deep learning using convolution neural networks to look at these ultrasound ct mri images do certain segmentations identify certain lesions identify certain conditions okay and what they are saying is that uh, you know take this hepatology pancreatology all endoscopy uh, you know fda is uh, currently at least for the endoscopy fda is saying that uh, they are recently approving breakthrough device designation for real type endoscopic ai systems so more and more such ai systems will come in this space which will actually help the physicians you know in improving accuracy and decreasing procedural time okay but long term clinical trials are needed to ascertain the benefits of all these ai systems okay so then uh, what they are saying over here is that uh, in the future you will have more ml models coming up in this space um, so they would want to identify things like liver cirrhosis and the conditions of the liver okay or pancreatic cancers and uh, as i looked into this paper most of them are your cnn algorithms okay so this was about the procedures which are done right now when samples are taken via these procedures they would be actually then uh, a biopsy would be done okay so then this will fall into the pathology domain where a slide will be created a biopsy slide will be created and a pathologist look at the, these images and identify certain conditions okay for example if it is of the intestine uh, then they look at whether certain conditions like celiac disease or um you know diagnosis of barrett's esophagus or colorectal polyps whether these kind of conditions are present similarly for uh, liver diseases it's about you know non alcoholic fatty liver disease versus uh, your nash which is another kind of uh, liver disease identification of features of that on the biopsy slides right again malignancy or cancers related to all these organs right so in the biopsy now for these biopsy images also ai models have been uh, you know developed which looks at uh, uh, you know uh, again networks based on cnn and other things which uh, look at these slides and then try to actually uh, classify them okay so here it's about hepatology again they were they're saying that models have been developed to evaluate degree of fibrosis uh, and then cnn model for disease severity for disease identification now you also have the electronic health record data where you have all these different data which is present right based on the visits and other things from that also models have been developed to predict mortality due to liver failure or uh, you know uh, what is the effect of uh, liver transplant right and uh, when should a transplant happen and these kind of uh, algorithms also have been developed okay so if you look at this space there is a lot of uh, uh, newer 
algorithms also is coming in like use of nlp okay on historical reports to see what is the progress of the condition all right and uh, to see if certain things follow ups have been done in a proper way like uh, whether there was adherence to proper surveillance intervals for example a condition was detected so every uh, in a certain time period a certain procedure has to be re repeated and when it was repeated what was the progress right and whether it was repeated or not so those kind of things can be found out by um, doing nlp algorithms on these reports all right so what they are saying is that uh, an nlp based study uh, it helped improve upon the identification and risk stratification of patients with cirrhosis um, from you know a very high percentage over here with a positive predictive 90% negative predictive value of 87 so this uh, this was using icd code but if you use nlp they said this values increased to 92 and 97% similarly nlp models have been built in crohn's disease where nlp model was shown to improve retrospective disease identification so you have nlp also which can be used on these reports from these various procedures to extract information and then look at certain timelines of progress and things like that okay so in this paper they have actually given a nice summary of the different applications of ai in this particular space and now if you want to work on these images i was looking for certain data sets and i found out there is this data set uh, which is about um, uh, this is kvsir it talks about multi class image data set for computed aided gastrointestinal disease detection okay so there is this data set where they have you know Uh, from four hospitals healthcare to these many number of people and they say over here is that data set consists of uh, images with different resolutions and organized in a way where they are sorted in separate folders named according to the content so here you have anatomical landmarks which are present in the images like z line this is a line where your esophagus ends and stomach starts so you have this contrast over here in the tissues uh same thing uh, uh, this is like the opening of the stomach pylorus and this is the opening of the you know proximal part of the large uh, bowel so uh, this is reaching sesum is a complete proof of proof for complete colonoscopy right so and this has shown to be a valid indicator for colonoscopy so if you have a colonoscopy set of uh, video if you identify this landmark that means that it has been done properly and that it could uh, it was a complete colonoscopy so things like this right are present in this particular uh, data set similarly pathological findings like polyps ulcerative colitis or esophagitis which is inflammation over here uh, these kind of things are also marked over here in these particular images okay so you can look at this data set and you can try different algorithms your cnn algorithms if you want to work in this area one more data set which i found out was this colonoscopy data set where um, computer aided classification of gastrointestinal lesions so where they have these videos and they also have these uh, you know lesions present in this particular uh, images okay or the video basically so i hope you find this video on the applications of ai in gastroenterology and hepatology useful uh, i will be putting the links to this review paper uh, as well as these data sets in the description of the video if you like the video please like share subscribe to the channel see you in another video happy learning